You could have given up, but you didn't. You could have stopped believing, but you didn't. You could have kept living their expectations, but you decided to make this life your own. And in turn, you're here. Hello everyone, today we're meeting Mickey Below. He is an author, a speaker, a podcast host at uh, Thought Leader Revolution podcast, also the founder of uh, E-Circle Academy and an advisor. Thank you so much, Kibil. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me on the show, Anna. It's a pleasure to be here. God bless you. Thank you. So let's start a conversation by diving into your journey of becoming the person you are today. What led you to discover your true passion in life? How did it start for you? Well, you know, actually, originally, Anna, I'm an immigrant from the Middle East. I'm a Christian from Iran. When I was 11 years old, the Islamic Revolution took place in Iran. And my late father, God rest his soul, he could see the writing on the wall. This wasn't going to be a place to raise a Christian family anymore. So he got us out of Iran and moved us to where I live now in Toronto, Canada. Now, when I was uh, 11, I didn't want to leave my home or my friends. But looking back now, it was the single greatest thing dad could have done for us. He took us from a legacy of tyranny to a legacy of freedom. And that made me a big champion for freedom. I believe that every human being inside their heart beats the living heart of freedom. Every human being wants to go find their own way, make their own path. And entrepreneurship is only possible with freedom. Without freedom, you don't have the ability to express yourself, to find what you want to do. So I became a champion for freedom. And that's what I really believe in. And that's what I talk about. But my father, he was just a wonderful man in so many ways. He was the kind of man that loved people, believed in people. He'd always tell me, Nikki, remember, life is not about numbers. It's not about money. It's about people, everybody. That's someone, that woman in front of you, she's someone's daughter, she's someone's wife, she's someone's sister, she's someone's, uh, you, you know, uh, girlfriend, she's, she's, she's someone's mother, man, you got to help her out. And if it's a man, it's someone's husband, someone's son, you know, someone's boyfriend, uh, someone's um, father, you got to help him out. Maybe they've been burned by somebody just like you who promised them everything and delivered them nothing. And it's your job to make them believe in humanities by believing in them, pouring your love in them, showing them you care. That's what it's all about. Everyone needs someone to believe in them. And my father taught me that. And he was an uplifter of people. If you were looking for work, he'd help you find a job. If you were looking to start a business, he'd help you start a business. If you were trying to buy a car or a house and you didn't have enough money, he'd give you a loan. So you could buy the car and the house, whatever money was missing, and he'd never let you pay it back because that's the kind of man that he was. He was incredible. And I wanted to be just like him. I wanted to serve people, help people. I got into entrepreneurship because I thought all entrepreneurs were people like my dad, good people who wanted to make the world a better place. So I wanted to help them. So many of them, Anna, were interested in helping the world with their product or their service but they were scared of selling and business. You know what I mean? They were scared of marketing. And so I would sit with them and I'd go, listen, don't think of it as selling. Let's reframe it mm -hmm. to serving. Nobody wants to be sold. Anna, you don't want to be sold. I don't want to be sold, but don't mm -hmm. you love it when someone serves you, gives you their heart, advocates for you? So just by teaching people how to serve, I helped them double, triple, fivefold, tenfold their business. So many people we did this for, you know, doctors who got into the world of business. They didn't want to be selling because doctors don't sell, but we teach them how to serve. They double, triple, quadruple their business. This one woman, she was a uh, owner of a clinic. Just by helping her go from selling to serving her clients, we helped her double, triple her clinic's business. It's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And like you said, it started with somebody believing in you because a lot of times people don't believe in themselves. And that's where, you know, that's the result of them being caught up in the negative thinking cycle. And they're not aware of what they're telling themselves on a daily basis. And they start buying into that and they start believing to something that it's not true 
or sure. you know something that they acquired along the way but again with them become mindful of what is it that you think and reframing that and and really like building that trust and believe in your own skills and abilities, seeing your own self-worth and the value that you can bring to people. That's from that place you can serve. But first you have to discover it for yourself, don't you think? Absolutely. And you know, so many of us have been beat up by life. Life has been hard to us. We've had authority figures tell us we're no good. We can't do this. We can't do that. Maybe a husband, a wife, a boyfriend, a girlfriend told us that. Maybe an enemy told us that. Maybe the messages of the government who's trying to keep everybody down and bring socialism back to the world is telling us that. But you need to have people who believe in you. you got to fill your mind with positive things like this podcast, like my podcast, like my books, like someone like me to be in your ear telling you you're a beautiful child of God. You were put here to do amazing, mighty things and that if you look for evidence, you will see that you're accomplished, that you're amazing, you're a miracle, you've done incredible things, and you need someone to stand with you, lock arms with you, and tell you how great you are, especially on the days you don't believe. Mm. Because that is my superpower, is my belief and my love that I pour into people. I've made people win just by pouring love into them. That alone is enough. Mm. And I'm telling you this, I teach thought leadership. I teach how to stand out. I teach how to think beyond the beyond. I teach all of that and I'm amazing at it. I have a, a, a master's degree from Georgetown University, an Ivy League school, graduated near the top of my class. I got all of that going on, but that's not what makes me special. What makes me special is I see you. I see the greatness in you. I believe in you. I pour love into you and I make you feel that love until you, you believe in yourself. And that belief that you have in yourself is what will propel you forward to victory in the most amazing, inspiring way. Yes, definitely. And the more we have people around us who uplift us, who believe in us, who see uh, our greatness beyond what, you know, what is in reality right now. Because again, if we look at our lives right now, this is what we created so far by doing something maybe unconsciously, maybe, you know, just with those self-limited beliefs that we have in place, we are making choices every single day, not realizing that's what's running in our life. And again, with us starting to believe in ourselves, to really like surround ourselves with people who uplift and seeing opportunities, from that point on, we can change. And that could happen at any point of time. If only you take that responsibility, if you make that decision for yourself that you want more, that you hear uh, to do something great and you have all those skills, abilities and talents inside of you. And it's time for you to really share that with the world, to share your gifts. That's what you hear for, to serve others in, in a way that, you know, meaningful to you. And you have to discover that for yourself. But again, like we need to make sure that we support ourselves with, again, with people that we talk to, with the habits that we develop on a daily life. You know, like there are maybe certain practices that you can share with us that help you to really like become that uh, person that is focused and knowing what he wants in his life. Well, the first thing you got to do is you've got to make a decision. The four qualities of success is a decision, is a decision. You got to make a decision to say, this is it. This is what I want. And you got to commit to it. Okay. I'm going to tell you the story of, of Napoleon Hill, the man who wrote the book, Think and Grow Rich, the best selling personal development book of all time, except for the Bible. When he was a young man, before he became famous, he was a newspaper reporter. And his boss sent him to go interview the then richest man in the world, Andrew Carnegie. And Andrew Carnegie uh, spent three hours with him and he took a shine to this young man. He said, hey, Mr. Hill, how would you like to spend the weekend with me at my estate? Now, I don't know about you, Anna, but if the richest man in the world said to me, Elon Musk today, Mr. Ballou, how would you like to spend the weekend at my estate? I'm going to call my sweetheart and say, sweetie, take care of the kids. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> right so 
Anyways, they spent a great weekend together. And at the end of it, Andrew Carnegie said, Mr. Hill, I have a proposition for you. How would you like to spend the next 20 years researching my philosophy of success and putting it in the form of a book and taking it to the world? I will pay you no stipend. But what I will do is I will give you letters of introduction to the 500 richest and most successful men and women in these here United States. What mm -hmm. say you? Now, this is important. It took Napoleon Hill 30 seconds to say, yes, I'll do it. The rest is history. He went, he interviewed those people. He wrote the most famous uh, personal development book of all time, Think and Grow Rich, made him a world famous person. 20 years later, he went to see Andrew Carnegie one last time before the great man passed on to the next life. And they were reminiscing about their first meeting. And then Mr. Carnegie said, Mr. Hill, I need to share something with you. He said, please. He said, you did not know this, but when I made that proposition to you all those years ago, I had a watch with a second hand, you know, those big old fashioned, beautiful yeah. watches yeah. in my hand under the table. And I was looking at it. I had given you 60 seconds to make up your mind. And if you had not made up your mind in 60 seconds, I was going to pull the offer. Oh. What? <laughs> He's going, but why? He said, yes. Why indeed? You tell me you've been studying my philosophy of success for 20 years. He goes, okay, okay I know this. I got this. Because successful people are decisive people, Anna. Successful people say yes. They don't take their time to make up their mind. They decide immediately. It either is a yes or it's a no. I don't need to think about it. I don't need to have a seance with my dead ancestors. I don't need to ask my wife, my husband, my dog. I'm a yes, I'm a no. That's how successful people roll. Mm -hmm. You know how losers roll? Oh. I got to think about it. I got to talk to my wife, my husband, my dog. Well, I'll let you know. And he said to him, all those years ago, I'd approached four other people, the, some of the most eminent educators in the U.S. They all said, I need to think about it. I'll get back to you. Two of them never did, and two of them got back to him much later than they said. And he said, I knew they had the wrong mentality. They had the mentality of an employee of a loser. Mm. Not that all employees are losers. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yes. And he said, wow, so you've got to be decisive. You've got to be committed. You've got to be in it to win it. And you can't tell, but seven, eight months ago, I weighed 227 pounds. I used to be a fitness trainer. And I told myself, hey, I'm going to, when I got into business, I'm going to get back into shape every year for 12 years. I gained weight, 50 pounds. I gained more than 50 pounds. So I looked at myself with my shirt off, my belly hanging over my 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 uh, uh, my belt. You can see pictures of me on Instagram like that. It's disgusting. And I said, oh, my God, no more. I'm committed to fix this. I'm going to hire a coach. I'm going to hire a coach because I'm not a fitness trainer anymore, and I'm going to listen to him. So I committed. I was willing to be bad, to be fat, to be out of shape. And now today I'm 169. This shirt, which used to be tight on me, look at it now. Look at my face. I, I'm 56 years old. I got the energy and the fire and the look of a man much younger. I'm not saying this to impress you, but to impress upon you, commitment is the path to victory. And then coachable. You got to be coachable. Yes. Robin Sharp once told me, if you want to double your income this year, triple your investment in personal and professional development, hire the coaches, join the masterminds, attend the conferences. Purchase the courses, buy and read the books. There is no substitute for coachability and a personal investment in yourself. If you're unwilling to invest in yourself, no one else will invest in you. Yes. Invest in yourself. And then finally, finally, Anna, you must, must become resourceful because it's going to take time, energy, and money investment in you to make it work. And I'll tell you a story about me. Mm. Many years ago, 12, 13 years ago, I, I, my then wife, seemingly out of the blue, left me. Maybe I should have seen it coming, but I didn't. I spiraled mm -hmm. to the point where she kicked me out of the house. I was sleeping on my mother's couch. Grown man with children sleeping on his mother's couch. It was terrible. Friend of mine took pity on me and bought me a ticket to a business conference. I saw a man deliver a talk. 
it hit me, inspired me. I walked up to him. I ran to the stage. I knocked people out of the way. And I went to him first and said, I'm Nikki Baloo, and I need to talk to you. He said, sure. I told him my story. And when I was done telling him my story, I said, I think I need to hire you. I was a little bit nervous. He could tell. He said, okay, you need to know my minimum fee is $5,000. I charge a lot more than that for most people. And it's for five hours of my coaching time. I offer no guarantees, no refunds. Do you still, and I require that you pay me in full upfront and in advance. Do you still want to work with me? Mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I told the old man, I don't have any money. I haven't made money for the last year. He said, I know, I'm going to give you some free coaching. I said, I love it. Give me free coaching. That's so great. He said, it doesn't matter how much money you have. I go, wait up, wait up, wait up. What are you talking about? It doesn't matter how much money I have. Mm. You want $5,000 from me. He said, look, son, called me son. You know, he wasn't much older than me. He said, I don't need your $5,000. I got 20 people lined up ready to work with me. And most of them are going to pay me a lot more than $5,000. Yeah. You need me. I don't need you. You got it? And I'm like, whoa, he's right. Okay. And then he said, it doesn't matter how much money you have. What matters is how bad do you want change? Mm. Your wife has left you, kicked you out of the house. You're sleeping on your mother's couch. You've made no money for a year. How much longer do you want to tolerate this state of affairs? A day, a week, a month, a year, a lifetime. I'm like, whoa, no, 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 no. I said, give me a couple days. I'm in an appointment to see him in two days. I called some people. That was when I was still a trainer. Mm -hmm. Ed said neither yes nor no to me. So I called them up and I said, I got good news for you. They go, what's the good news? I said, you are fat. And if you don't lose weight, you are going to have a heart attack. You're going to get diabetes. It's not good. They go, you're right. And I'm broke. If I don't make money, I won't be allowed to see my sons. Mm. So let's get together. I'll give it to you for half price. But here's the deal. You got to say yes now. You got to pay me now. What's it going to be? Two guys gave me $1,000 each. I was excited. I had $2,000. I went to see this guy. I dropped $2,000 on the table. I go, here you go. He goes, that's great. But I said five, not two. I'm like, oh, my. <laughs> I was deflated. And I said, wait up, wait up, wait up. I said, listen, Bill, his name was Bill. I said, Bill, how many people have you told this story to? He said, this story? I go, yeah, this story. He said, over the years? I mean, he said, 30, maybe 40. I go, wow, that's a lot. I said, besides me, who else ever came back to you with any money? He goes, man, that is a great question. You're the very first. I'm like, oh. me, the very, the very first. I'm like, damn. Then take this $2,000, I'll sign a contract saying I'll pay you the balance in 30, 60 days, whatever the case may be. He agreed. And the rest is history. I made six figures in less than six months. I paid him off early. And uh, early. Mm -hmm. And here's what I understood. What matters in life is not how much money you have, how good you are at what you do. Do you believe and care about people? And how bad do you want change for yourself? How bad do you want change, Anna? Are you happy with where you are? Or is where you are un and stay stuck and make maybe small, steady progress? Or are you ready to take off like a rocket and live the life you were meant to live, that God meant the love and help of great people around you. Great people like this man was for me and I am for all the people I help. That is the key question everyone listening to this show needs to ask themselves. Have I made a decision that this is what I want? Have I committed to be in it to win it? No, I'll try it. Am I going to be coachable and invest in myself? And am I going to do what I got to do in order to get to victory? That is what we got to talk about. Anna. That and nothing else. Yes, wow, it's so inspiring. Your story is really the evidence of what you know is important. We have to make that decision. And if enough is enough, if you understand that this is, you know, not your life, this is not how you want to live, you know, you're not satisfied, you're not fulfilled, you feel you know, all of those unpleasant feelings for a reason, for you to really wake up 
This is the indicator for you to look into what is that that you want to do. And it's time. It's time for you to make that change. It's time for you to take responsibility for creating your life, to make that decision. And it starts with actions. It's not that you are waiting for somebody to come and save you or something to change. You know, you are the change. You have to make choices and take actions to really be committed to that process, to know it will take time and it will require your time and effort. But if you committed enough to really start that process today and become consistent with what you do and eventually it's just it's just a matter of time but you will get what you want even more than you expected right and it's all about your readiness your willingness and sometimes it takes you know hard times for people to understand this sometimes they come to this rock bottom and they really feel in pain they feel like the worst they ever felt in life. But those times is the time of change. Those times really open up, you know, the more opportunities and really give you the chance to choose again, to choose yourself, to choose your life. And I'm so inspired by your story and I'm so you know happy to see that transformation and now you're in a place where you can inspire others what if you didn't take that chance back then what if you didn't make that decision you were not be able to you know do what you do right now and as we see that as a you know kind of like consequences of our choices the the end result is start with that small decision that you made back then but now like it's a ripple effect it's not only about us there is a bigger purpose in all of that that courageous act that you know that took you to agree to be coachable to start your life from the scratch you know that's what is important and that's what everybody should really like understand the the significance of it because it's not only about us we will impact so many people along the way and it's just you know it's amazing to see how it could transform somebody's life and that's the best I would say evidence of why you're doing that and this is the reason why you wake up every morning to help others is that right 1,000%, 1,000%, and, and I can tell you a very powerful final story that puts it all together beautifully. So let me just do that right now, okay? Um, in January of 2018, a woman came to us who was introduced to us by some dear friends. And this woman was a very uh, exceptional, talented woman. She was the country director for Canada for one of the largest and oldest personal development companies in the world. They've been around since the 1960s with thousands and thousands of clients, right? And she was really good at what she did, but she felt she needed help to grow the company. So she brought a man on to help her. And for the first year, it was great. They really just did amazing things together. They grew the company. But after about a year, their vision of the future diverged and there was a board of directors involved and they kicked her out of her own company kind of like steve jobs in the 1980s with apple when he brought john scully and he got kicked out of apple for a while she was lost bereft not sure what to do next someone introduced her to me and my lady i work with my lady Teresa. And we sat with her and we helped her get clear on her message. So she was going to work not with everybody, but with entrepreneurs with $10 million plus companies. Mm -hmm. And she was going to help them de to deal with this um, sense of emotional overwhelm and pressure that many entrepreneurs go through. She was going to be the confidant, the person who's going to help them get over that so they could continue to operate their companies and have great lives with their families and all that. And 
So we helped her get a narrow, narrow market, narrow message. Uh, you're, you're going to have it all. You're not going to, you know, do your company and blow up your family or vice versa. And in her first month, she did ten thousand dollars in 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 new new income. In her second month, she did twelve thousand dollars in new income. In her third month, she did eighteen thousand dollars in new income. And in her fourth month, she did sixty two thousand two hundred dollars in new income. It was amazing in a single month. And she lives in Ottawa. I live in Toronto. It's a five hour drive. And my oldest son plays. Uh, the real football, you know, the one you play with your feet, right? Soccer, they call Soccer. it here. <laughs> <laughs> but he had a tournament in Ottawa. He was 12 at the time. And uh, she has a son his age. So I called her and I said, hey, we're coming to Ottawa for a tournament. Uh, you know, why don't you bring your son and he can come watch the game and we'll, we'll all have a great time. And she's like, sure, sounds good. So they came, you know, to watch the game. We won the tournament, which was great. And then everybody had lunch and we drove home. A few weeks later, we had our quarterly uh, branded thought leader immersion workshop. This is where we take amazing experts, people just like you who are in business, who have incredible expertise. We show them what they can do from a thought leadership point of view to 5X, 10X, 100X their business, uh, like we've done for her. And we were at the back end enrollment opportunity. So the back end uh, program uh normally the way i do it is i ask my members to say tell the people about your experience and uh she said okay so long story really really short um i said who'd like to share she jumps on stage almost knocks me over i'm like okay you go ahead i stood in the back uh you know behind her she's on the front of the stage so everybody can pay her attention to her and i I'm in the background and I can see her shoulders are going like this. And I'm like, mm. what's going on? She's like, is she, is she crying? Yeah, she was crying. I'm like, like any man, when a woman cries in front of us, the first thought in my head is, what did I do? <laughs> right. And so she, she was crying and my beautiful lady comes up with some tissues and she turns around to me and she goes, Nikki, you didn't know this. But when you and your son came to see me and my son in Ottawa, my little boy said, Mommy, Mommy, who are we going to go meet? And I said, Oh, sweetie, we're going to go meet Nikki Ballou and his son. And then my son looked at me and he got very quiet, she said. And he asked me, Mommy, are we going to meet the man who saved our family? And I'm like, Anna. I normally am not a man who cries in public, but I cried, we hugged. And she said, you didn't know this, but when we first met, the bank was coming to take our home. We were gonna foreclose on the mortgage because I hadn't paid it. My husband and I, we were fighting every day about money. And um, my kids were afraid we were gonna break up. I was afraid we were gonna break up, but you know, you helped us bring in money. I paid off the bank, we stopped fighting and that saved our family. And Anna, I looked at her and I thought, yes, it was important to show her about thought leadership. It was important to show her about messaging. It was important to show her how to go get clients and price properly and all those things that we teach people how to do. What was most important was to show this woman love and belief and caring. Because that, you don't know what someone's dealing with. And when you stand up for somebody, you can help turn their life around. You can save a family and save a marriage and save a life. And that's really why I do what I do. I want to save a family, save a marriage, save a life. And I want to make a beautiful future possible for everybody that I work with. And that's the way for me to end this conversation with you. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. Yeah. And that's what really matters in our life is, you know, really being who you want to be, living the life that you want for yourself, for your kids, for your loved ones, enjoying every moment. How can you create that life for yourself? If you are struggling, if you are in a, you know, not the best financial position right now, it shouldn't be this way. You can change with the help of others. There are experts, coaches out there who can really show you 
how to overcome it. You don't have to struggle yourself. I feel like we are here um, to be mentored, to be coached by somebody who who've been on that path, who really knows how to overcome it in an easier less painful way you don't have to do it yourself and again it could save your marriage it could save uh you know your life in the end really it's very important to invest in your personal development to learn to get that knowledge to apply it to your life and to see the result for yourself isn't that worth it isn't that what that's all about you know and everything could change in a year from today like we always underestimate what could be done during that time you know and you can be in a totally different place and from that place you can serve others in a more powerful way that you could you know right now and that's what's important and Thank you so much for sharing your story. And again, seeing clients that really come up to you and, you know, and and share that from their heart, how important that was. Not just helping with the business, but in a more meaningful way in terms of like saving the family, really. And that's what that's what it's all about. This is how we help others. And uh Every one of us has that capability, that talent that will help others in some way. You know, we just need to really believe in ourselves and give ourselves a chance to be that person, to be the best that we can, to be successful in our craft. And then everything falls into place from that point on. You know, and you don't have to chase anything that it's not meant for you. It will come to your life easily. But first, give yourself that time, compassion, self-love, and build yourself to the point where you can deliver that message. Whatever anybody needs to hear from you, you will deliver that. Well said. Super well said. (laughs) Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and wisdom. For those who would like to connect with you, how can they find you online? Go to ecircleacademy.com forward slash appointment and let's book a call. Let's have a conversation about where you're at and um, let's pour some love and belief into you and help make it possible for you. It's a free call, so take advantage of it. Sure, I'll also add in the show notes as well. And as we close today, what would be the thought for our listeners? Believe in someone else. It's the fastest way for you to rekindle your own belief in yourself. Yes, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy your day. You too. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, hit the subscribe button and share it with others. Stay tuned.